So everybody remember to pause their Slack notifications. Yes. I don't get to make noise ever, so. <laughs> All right, I'm going to broadcast. Are you ready? Let's do this. Yep. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this textile talk featuring the Modern Quilt Guild, and thanks for joining us. I'm Brenna, the Communications Manager of the Modern Quilt Guild, and today I'm joined by two of my friends and co-workers, Amanda hines Bernay, who is the Director of Partnerships, and Colleen Mullen, who is the Exhibits Coordinator of the MQT. Before we get started on our conversation about modern quilting, I want to let you know that if you have any technical difficulty at all, um, please like, leave me a note in the Q&A box down below and then I can work with you to find a solution. Also, um, you're, you, can always, you can always try to just close out Zoom and re-log back in. We'll still be here chatting about quilts. Um, this webinar is being recorded. It will be posted to the Textile Talks page in addition to um, the Modern Quilt Guild resources page. We will have a Q&A session at the end of our presentation and we're all pop back on and ask questions for Colleen and Amanda. So if you have any questions, please make sure you are putting them in the Q&A box and not the chat box. Um, so for those of you who are new to Textile Talks, this is a series of weekly presentations and panel discussions from fiber art organizations, including the International Quilt Museum, Quilt Alliance, San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles, Studio Art Quilters Association, Associates, Surface Design Association, and us at the Modern Quilt Guild. Um, before we begin, a little bit about each panelist. Amanda Hines Bernay is a quilt maker and educator living in Austin, Texas. As I said before, she is the director of partnerships at the MQG, and she has also served as the president of her local MQG, the Austin Guild, um, for two years. She is really drawn to traditional shapes and techniques with fabrics that lend a more modern feel. When she's not quilting, she's reading, running, or attempting gardening, and shooing her cats off of her fabric. I think we can all relate to that. Oh. Always. Um, Colleen is in San Diego, and she has a passion for a variety of textile and fiber arts. She is our exhibit, exhibits coordinator, and she has been an active member in four local chapters over 10 years, which is awesome. Um, Colleen shares her love of textiles with others by teaching workshops in quilting, color theory, and punch needle rug hooking. She loves using bold colors with mid-century modern feel to, um, to merge her training as a graphic designer with traditional fiber arts. So I am going to go dark and hand it over to Amanda and Colleen, who are going to discuss modern quilts as they share a series of images of past uh, quilt con winners. So take it away, ladies. Thanks, Brenna. Thanks, Brenna. <laughs> oh, hi, Colleen. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> I um, ex am excited to chat with you for an hour about quilts because what a fun break from all the other things we normally do. It um, is. <laughs> yeah, so we've titled this um, presentation Reflecting on Modern, a retrospective chat about QuiltCon winners. And um, just so everyone knows, mm -hmm. we went through all of our past QuiltCons from 2013 all the way up to 2020. And we pulled 20 quilts to discuss. And all of these quilts have won some first, second, third place or another award at the show. And we are going to chat through the different things that make them modern, uh, why they fit into their categories so well, and just sort of break down some of the design elements of, uh, of the quilts. Right, I think one of the things on the last textile talk that the Modern Quilt Guild presented, they had a lot of questions on what exactly makes a quilt modern. 
And just like movements in the art world, there is no one set answer to what makes a quilt modern. You know, there are quilts that have been, had that modern art feel that have been made for generations. So with the MQG, they worked really long and hard on giving some sort of a definition to what modern quilts are. <clears throat> um, and again, just like definitions of movements in modern art or all art, um, this is not all encompassing. So the modern quilts are primarily functional. They're inspired by modern design. Um, there's no one answer of what a modern quilt is. If you look at modern art world, there are such a wide variety of styles incorporated there. However, there are several characteristics that kind of have that modern feel. Um, so they include, but are not limited to, and here I go reading a bulleted list, which is presenter 101. Don't do this, but they these are, these use- are guideposts, right? What? These are guideposts. They're the things that we can kind of reach back to, to- Right, right. You take bits and pieces of these, um, bold colors, bold prints, high contrast, graphic areas of solid color. And that's one thing, you know, people say, well, you know, look at the Amish quilts. They used solid colors for a long time. Again, it's not limited to modern quilting, but solid colors are really prevalent in modern quilts as well. Improvisational piecing, uh, minimalism, expansive negative space, and negative space does not just mean a big field of white. <laughs> That's a common misconception. Like modern quilt means it's a big white background with one little thing on it. And sure, that happens, but it's not all that it is. Um, they use alternate grid work. You'll see, you know, in especially modern traditionalism quilts, there's these foundational blocks where we think of a 12 inch block repeated across up and down the rows in a traditional quilt. Um, alternating how you put those maybe very traditional blocks into a quilt makes it have a modern bent to it, you know? Yeah. And then there's the classic modern traditionalism, you know? Yes. Taking those blocks and updating them and flipping them and zooming in and zooming out, so. Right. Scale plays a big role in, in modern quilts, playing with scale, I think, making things really large or really, really small. Yeah, which we'll see some of. Right. Are you ready? I'm ready. First okay. quilt. <laughs> Enough of us. Here's the pretty things. <laughs> yes, show us the pictures. Yes, yeah, so the first quilt we um, chose to talk about is Waterfall by Sarah Lauzon. Uh, this was in our 2019 quilt con. It was entered in the minimalist design category, but ended up winning our excellence award at the show. So it's, it would be hanging at the front of the show next to best in show. Mm -hmm. um, I just really think that this quilt is so striking to me. Um, certainly the black and white, I think is a really nice hallmark of modern, you know, two color quilts occur throughout forever, but um, this black and white with the angled piecing, there's, it's so interesting to look at. It is. It's very striking when you first see it. It's bold and you could walk away and just think, oh, that's a nice black and white quilt. And then you get closer and you see all these little details that make it so interesting. That vertical white quilting coming down those waterfalls, you know, you think, here's this where there's a lot of water and then a little water and the wavy lines in the background. It's really easy to see why this was chosen as the Quilting Excellence Award because it's excellent on so many levels of design and every piece of quilting in it is very intentional to really help put that across. Yeah, I agree. I, I like to, you know, it's, it's been such a luxury in a way to prepare for this presentation because Normally at QuiltCon, I'm sort of running by the quilts or I like try to like mm -hmm. zip through the show really fast, but to sort of sit and think about them and what is noteworthy. And one thing I found myself looking for here is even, and it's just a photograph, so I can't quite tell as well as I would be able to in person, but the way how she pieced the white and black and then where 
those white and black sections were pieced in to the black negative space. Um, mm -hmm. And then those skinny, skinny, skinny white strips. <laughs> And they're perfect, right? It's really hard to piece this tiny quarter inch strip. And that is straight the whole way. I, you know. Yeah. And um, this quilt is not huge, right? 31 by no. 50. So mm -hmm. that is a tiny strip. It is. And knowing the artist whose work this is based on, um, Minor White is a really great photographer. And you can see the influence of this and see how it's draws on the style of his photography, but it's in no way an exact representation. It's clearly taking a work by another artist and making it your own. So instead of following a pattern, a lot of modern quilters do this improvisation or come up with their own thing and just play with it until it feels right. And that seems like what she did here. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. All right, moving on. This one, um, this is Ascend by Nicole Neblett. This was in our 2015 show. It won second place in the minimalist design category. It's, it's good. I mean, I love the simplicity of just these four shapes in this field. Mm -hmm. and, and when we talk about scale and that expansive negative space, yeah, you know, where the focus of your eye goes in this quilt is those four orangey red arrows, but this wouldn't be successful without that expansive negative space, right? If it was just four arrows that filled the entire field, it would be a completely different quilt than the look we get by having it offset and pointing up like yep. if you're reaching for something and it's yeah. just out of reach, you know? <laughs> yeah, when I was looking at it earlier, I was also thinking how different it would be if she hadn't used the same orange on every arrow. Like what if they were four mm -hmm. different colors? That would be a different quilt. And then just like you're saying, if, if that expansive negative space was cut off and it was centered in the middle of the white, that wouldn't be nearly as interesting to look at either. Right, it takes a, a really skilled design eye to look at how big that should be, how offset it should be, it's not, perfectly in thirds. It's not mm -hmm. perfectly anything except to me this quilt is perfect, you know? <laughs> so. <laughs> and, and then I notice also like the inverse ghost quilting that like mm -hmm. from the top point, you know, it, it flips and the quilting goes the opposite direction. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's kind of the beauty of a minimalist quilt in a lot of ways is it you can really focus on the detail because there's not a lot of piecing and shapes to get in the way. Right. So you have to be confident in your quilting to quilt all that negative space. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't made a quilt with that much negative space yet. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, and then we have Lincoln, obviously. Um, Lincoln is by Kim Soper. Uh, this was uh, in the 2017 quilt con in Savannah, Georgia. It won People's Choice. Um, I do think I voted for this one. And um, it also was improvisation category first place as well. Right. And this is another piece that's based on a, a work of art where it's translated into a different medium and that translation gives it such a different texture and feel um, that you can't necessarily achieve with a flat print, you know? Right. Um, I feel like a lot of people look like I've heard this question about this quilt. How is this improv? Because clearly she had a plan. Right. It, it's improv with intent. You know, it's not willy nilly throw some fabric up and sew it together. And I think we have another quilt in here that has pieces that are more that type of improv. Um, and we'll get to that. But improv doesn't have to mean unplanned. Right. You, you have to have an idea of where you want your quilt to go but it's working without a pattern and it's working to an end goal without somebody else telling you how to do that. Right. Yeah. So in, I, I wrote sort of my notes about this quote and then I looked back at her artist statement to see what she said. And she talked about how she used an image and then made, 
you know, piece the blocks sort of in an improv style off of the image. And then when she right. was happy with it, would put it into the composition, mm -hmm. which I think is really a cool way of doing it. Yep. And there are, there are people who would have done, approached this without improv, you know, they would have approached it and very much put it into a software system or come up with your pattern pieces. This is something that would work very well being, you know, foundation paper pieced with a very clear end in mind. But you get this bit of an organic feel by doing it improvisationally, where things don't necessarily line up perfectly. They have points that may not match. And that just adds interest. Yeah. I, I feel like, the, to me, this is very reminiscent of Andy Warhol, like with the color splotches and the choices that she made, how one side of his face is much brighter with the white and then the yellow and red side right. kind of recedes a little bit. Yes, and the artist that it, whose piece it was based on is a pop artist, you know, using computer-aided designs for prop, pop art. And again, it's that overlapping bits and pieces, these bold, bright colors that are so reminiscent of pop art, but also fit that modernist feel, you know. So it's not one checklist where you have to check every box. Boxes are all over the place. <laughs> totally. And, and this quilt, I'm sure it had, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I feel like it ha surely has hung at other shows. You know, it's not strictly a quilt that would hang at QuiltCon. It would definitely be in other quilt shows too. Right. And I, I also think this one is a great example. We see a lot of straight line quilting in modern quilts. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like it's used well. And sometimes I feel like, you know, maybe we didn't know what else to do. Um, but this to me is like a great example of like the piecing just needs to be the star. And so that straight line quilting kind of just, you know, quilts it and gives it, it doesn't distract your eye. Right. It honestly, it adds to it to, for me. It makes it feel like it's a piece of art on like a brick wall, that texture of the quilting with the blocks in the background. It looks like somebody could have painted this, you know on a brick wall as a great mural and it would have worked as well. Oh yeah, I like that analogy. Thank you, Lincoln. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, this is such a good one. Um, this is called The One for Eric by Sean Kimber. This was um, in 2016 QuiltCon. She entered it in the improv category and it won first place. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, of course, the message of this quilt is the most powerful thing of it, right? Which is not restricted to modern quilts. I feel like that's something that quilters have been doing forever. Right. Uh, but this is such a modern take. It is. And, and seeing the change in the background piecing echoing the changes in the piecing of the words. Again, this is improv with intent. There is clearly something that needed to be said and just getting it out there in any way that you can. Um, yeah, It's getting that feelings that are in your, you just can't get rid of it any other way and getting it out there. And that's what art is, is expressions of that feeling and then interpretations of those expressions and how even this beautiful log cabin piecing in the background with all of these black fabrics and throwing in those colors and the gradation of it as it goes down to get the blue that matches the blue in the words. And mm -hmm. this quilt stops me in my tracks every time I see it. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, the color story of just the way you start, like for me, the white down to the blue is like, it's almost like an air to drowning sequence. And then, mm -hmm. and then just the, the dark palette of the whole quilt is just, really evocative, I feel like, of the horror of, you know, the killings by police of African American people. Right. Um, and I mean, I, I feel like this is one that I would like to read the artist statement verbatim, do you think? Right. Do you want me to? Um, yeah. That'd be great. So what Sean had to say about this is the, the improvisational patchwork here is meant to remind one of graffiti scrawled impulsively on a wall in the shadows. Hand quilting in winding trails of various reds invokes brick and blood. And you can't really see that red in this picture yeah. very well, but it's there. It's a quilt in my Elegy series. This 
one is for Eric Garner, who was killed in a chokehold by NYPD officer Daniel Pant Pantaleo on July 17th, 2014 on Staten Island. His suspected crime was selling loose cigarettes on a street corner. Recorded in a viral video on a smartphone, these were Eric's last words. For me, these words are filled with meaning far beyond this incident. And I think we're seeing that now even, that these are so many Black men's last words. Yeah. And it shouldn't be, you know. Right. But this quilt, aside from just the quilting, evokes that strong statement. Still and relevant. hopefully a means to change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Sean. Okay. Um, then we have this one, which is going back to our 2013 show, Untitled. This is by Lindsay Stead. It was in our handwork category. Mm -hmm. It's very bold, this piece. When I look at, I, at it, I also, you know, for me, it's very patriotic flag reminiscent. There's some sort of interpretation there. Um, and then, this is one to me that would fit in so many categories. It's very modern traditional where yeah. it's this log cabin, but only one corner of it. And the scale of it, 60 by 60, with it being this one yeah. this portion could of a block, minimalist, you know. This could be in minimalist design. This could be in use of negative space. This could be in mod trad, mm -hmm. um, for sure. I yeah. love, like, one of my favorite things here is the slightly, oh, look, I can use my mouse, the slightly different <laughs> reds that she's pieced in. Like, mm -hmm. just, I just, I love a detail, you know? I love a good detail. Right. And that it's not everywhere. It's three no. very intentional bits of that other color where if it was all patchworky in those reds, it wouldn't have the same impact as those three small pieces. Yeah. And then the way that the navy sort of, you know, starts and stops in different, in different places. Mm -hmm. So this is machine pieced, but hand quilted, which yeah. is why it wasn't hand work. You know, the other thing I'm noticing right now that I didn't look at before is, the, is I think it's a matched pieced binding. It's, I don't think it's faced. No, you're right. It is. You can see the binding on that top right corner. And then in the bottom, it just disappears with mm -hmm. matching very, very well. Yes, it's very well matched. Even the over here in on the left, the little change in red is also mm -hmm. matched in the binding. Unless I'm totally off base and it is face, but I really think it's a binding. No, I think so too. That's really, that's really good. It's like trying to see if she says anything about that in the artist statement. Yeah, it's when I, when it, I, it doesn't mention it. it so um, those of you that can't see it, her statement talks about this is her interpretation of a traditional log cabin that she focused in just on one corner, which is not the way I had thought about it when I first saw the quilt before I read her statement. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Next. Oh, I love this one. This is like... I made this quilt, a version of this quilt after I took Tara's class and um, mm -hmm. I just, Tara's color is just makes my heart happy. So good. <laughs> so this is double wedding ring, um, 78 inches square by Tara Fonin. This was in handwork in 2016 and it placed second. Um, you know, this one is such a modern traditional example. Like I feel like it's, it is it could it would hold its own in any quilt show traditional right. if you look at this there's nothing like unusual about the layout you know it's very much double wedding ring in the traditional pattern but what really makes it is the use of color where it's not one background color with different colored rings right it's the way it's played with and she made this entirely out of scraps there was not pulling a palette, but these scraps play so well together. Mm -hmm. And it's combos you wouldn't necessarily expect. In that upper right corner where it's 
that blue and pink and green together. That's something I would never think to put together, but it works so well in this quilt. Army green and bubblegum pink. <laughs> I know. Not your usual. <laughs> and then I, I also like how some of these shapes are one color, and mm -hmm. then you have an area over here where it's not, where this, and that's, by doing that, I feel like then she kind of lets us into the secret on where is the block. Right. You know, because then you see, oh, here, this is one block. Um, yeah. And this is entirely hand pieced and hand quilted. Just, I feel like. Very inspirational. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know that, so having heard Tara talk about this quilt, it's, it's inspired very directly by a vintage quilt from the Kirikoff collection, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, by an unknown maker and she really wanted to recreate it in her own color story so right yeah I remember looking at this one a long time at QuiltCon in Pasadena there's a lot to see here there is that's good okay oh next we have Eb. Eb is a little mini quilt 41 by 36 I guess that's small, not many. Um, this is by Carolyn Friedlander um, from our applique category, and this was second place winner in 2016. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think one thing that makes this feel really modern to me is that it feels like it's off-center, but it's not. Those pieces are centered in the quilt, and they're very straight, very, it has this feeling of being like organic and improv, when it's really very linear. Mm -hmm. it's well, that, that white strip next to the cream over there on the right, mm -hmm. it fools your eye a little bit to me. Like that's why it looks off center, but it's not off center. Right. Yeah. This is another one that reminds me, it, looking at it, it doesn't feel like it should remind you of, um, but it reminds me of Albert's work with the play on color and how the colors change based on what yes. they're next to. You know, you think Joseph Albers and it's all big squares, mm -hmm. but this reminds me of that because the shapes are the same and they repeat, but they look different depending on what fabric they're out of or what fabric they're next to and how they're layered on top of each other. It changes the look of these shapes and the fabrics completely. It does. It does, and I, the more I looked at this quilt, which I have, and I've seen this quilt multiple times, but I had never realized that a lot of these sections that are the same fabric, it's like, it was one little rounded square that she cut and then flipped. Like, mm -hmm. I, I thought they were two pieces separately, but not all of them are like that. This is not quite like that, but that is the top to this bottom, I believe. And that is the top to this bottom. So that right. was sort of a clever realization for me. Like, oh, she didn't waste fabric there. She just no. cut it. A bit. <laughs> right. I also think that the vertical hand quilting down the columns really helps anchor everything here. Mm -hmm. And if these, if these pieces were kind of piggledy piggledy all over the the space they would be harder to see in a way but the fact that they're columned up like this it lets you kind of look more in detail at, at what the shapes are right right and the play with the quilting in the background being very linear very straight very architectural knowing you know coming from carolyn that that's expected being right. an architect herself um is such a contrast with the organic shapes that are applicated on there and it really makes them stand out on their own yes yeah it kind of reminds me of like wind chimes or like something you would hang on a tree oh right <laughs> yeah no just me seashells on the beach <laughs> carolyn she knows her her applique she's always coming up with like new and different ways to applique different shapes right yeah. Right. And in a traditional show, this would stand up as well because her technique is flawless. It, yeah. you know, perfect little stitches. Yeah. 
really oh. good. Um, Colleen, we're halfway through. That's that's ten. Okay. Okay, we're up. We're on the top of the mountain. So here we go. <laughs> so this is a quilt for our bed um, by Laura Hartrick. This mm -hmm. was 2015 People's Choice winner, and it was entered in the use of negative space category. Yep. Um, what a, I mean, what a sweet quilt, right? It's a quilt for their bed. Good night, love you. It is. And in her artist statement, she says, you know, I've been a quilter for five years and have never made a quilt for our bed. So <laughs> it took her five years into it. And then um, it's really cute because this is something she and her husband say to each other. And then she says, and this way, if I stay up late quilting, the quilt says it for me. <laughs> and I love so it's, where I am. <laughs> right. It's really fun. And it's a fun way to take that, you know, traditional drunkard's path or a quarter circle and play with the values in it where you can make it spell words out instead of just being the quarter circles like it is in the background with that low volume um, yeah i love how the like the traditional block of the quarter circle unfussed with right she just plays with it in to group it into colors makes this font that's super modern right like super like mid-century retro modern. And I just sort of, I love the way that that works. And my other favorite thing about this is that the dot of the I is the inverse quarter circle. Yes. Not, not like the other way. Right. You know, know, and these letters are not perfect. They're not traditional, you know, there's no, here I am graphic designer and my textbook on fonts is right back there and I can't think of the right word. <laughs> Um, the but there's no cutouts and there's no <laughs> breaks and the T is a little weirdly misshapen and the H and the N don't have their arcs in the middle, but you know what they say. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's so bold and the contrast between the letters and the background really makes it stand out. Yeah, for sure. I think this is also another, I'm always really enchanted when people so effectively can use a lot of solids and a few prints and do it well so it doesn't look like an afterthought or like you just ran out of something um mm -hmm. and I think I love the use of prints in this along with the solids right because it you have to look really closely to know that I think nearly all of those background pieces are prints they're just yeah. tone on tone and very low value and then the few prints that are those bold florals really stand right. out. This one, yeah. And it makes you look closer mm -hmm. to see where else she's used prints. And then you realize she's used prints over the majority of the quilt, with the exception of the letters. Yep. Yeah. The quilting on this, it looks like it's not just straight line. Like she's done different things in different sections, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. I mean, no, no wonder it won people's choice. It's such a sweet <laughs> and like artistic quilt at the same time. Yep. Okay, next we have Fill the Void. Um, this is a big quilt. It's 84 by 88, which when I look at the picture, I don't think that. I feel like it should be smaller, but I feel like that's important. Mm -hmm. um, this is by Cinzia Aloka. I hope that I said that correctly. Um, she, this was in the 2015 quilt con and it won third place in our handwork category. Mm -hmm. Handwork. Yes. All of those circles are hand quilted. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that is, yeah, that's a big task and they are very symmetrical circles. They are not wonky circles. They are. You, I expected them to be very free-flowing and loose, loosely formed like those, you know, orange peels are, but they're mm -hmm. not. The precision in that hand quilting is remarkable um, and contrasts really well with that bold white orange peel. Yeah, I think this is another, like, this is another quilt I would hold up for people, for someone who was like, show me a modern quilt. I don't, you know, I want to see a good example because it's like you see the traditional element here. You see that orange peel cathedral window element, but it is so obviously modern the way that 
some aren't there and it's not mm-hmm. perfect and it's a little wonky, um, very right. organic. It makes me think of, you know, it's an orange peel, but when you peel an orange, all of the wedges are not the same size. <laughs> all of these wedges are not the same size. <laughs> They're weirdly shaped, but they fit together and they make yeah. this whole composition really strong. And I'm looking at the negative space in it too, because I'm my eye keeps looking at where these points meet or don't meet and how much space is there in the background. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about what's obvious. It's about the negative space behind it as well. Yeah. Like this section right here is really Mm -hmm. the way it's a little off. Yeah. I I do feel like um, to take any quilt and make it more modern like if you sh- if you really limit your color palette that can can modernize a quilt a lot not right. saying that they're all that way but um it's just really it makes everything stand out okay <clears throat> okay this is the blue giant this is by tara glastonbury um in 2018 this one first place in our handwork category and it is giant it's 85 inches square oh yeah handwork mm-hmm. category again <laughs> hand quilted <laughs> denim <laughs> tara <laughs> what are you doing it's amazing <laughs> so good um, yeah it's so good right and in contrast to the last one where you look at they took a traditional block and made it modern by making it very imprecise and improv and not uniform. The piecing on this with denim. Can we say that again one more time? With denim. With denim. The piecing yeah, denim. is perfect. It is precise corners, straight, straight lines. It's those just immaculately pieced. Denims match up. Right. And we know all denims have different weights to get those and I've seen this in person the seams lay remarkably flat (laughs) for such a thick material it's it's amazing I you know to me this quilt is such it's obvious I mean I I don't know what she intended when she was making it but to me it feels like such an homage to like G's bin quilts and these really old like utility quilts except except it's so precise so it's like using denim, being able to see the knee creases and in the denim here and um, Mm -hmm. or where it's been patched. But (laughs) like it is, you know, I feel like that's always important to remember if we're reaching back to the quilters that have already done these things. And then this is just Mm -hmm. different ways of um, playing with those same ideas. Right. It's like using cotton feed sacks to create a quilt because you have them. So this is using these discarded repurposed pieces of denim because you have them. It's not going out and buying new material. Yeah. It's working with what you have, which is such a throwback to the traditions, but then making it just different enough. Exactly. And the way that the, that what would typically be the negative space of this star is pieced and it's pieced Mm -hmm. so well um, and precisely I love that choice that she made to just bring in more denim strips that way. It's a good one. Hand quilted. And like the hand quilting is so linear and, and that grid is just really, really almost perfect. It's really good. Mm -hmm. I want to just like, after we're done, I just want to go quilt. (laughs) (laughs) Um, this is, this is a good one. This is oh, um, Ron. I know Ron. This is the Ron quilt. Um, it's 60 by 80. So it's pretty big. Um, Monica Solorio Snow made this in 2013 and it won first place in the piecing category. Um, mm-hmm. if you have never watched Parks and Rec, this is a pixelated portrait of Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec, the TV yeah. show. It's, uh, screams to me of like modern art where you know modern artists were shirking that tradition of realistic paintings of 
figures and people and going with a more conceptual idea. And this does the same thing in quilting form. You know, there are beautiful art quilts that are so realistic and a person on it looks like a person. And this is a massive blob of squares. It looks like what happens when your computer doesn't focus and won't like your internet won't load or and this is what happens. And again, these are just two inch squares. So it's very traditional patchwork quilt, but getting away from the realism mm -hmm. to an abstracted view of it. Right. And it's still very obvious what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause you, I mean, I see art quilts that are just, it, I mean, they could be a photograph and the way that those are done it blows my mind. So perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this is just sort of the, the grainy version. Um, right. I love the, that there's prints in it too. And is that a bird on his head? Is that a bird? It, that yeah, I think so. I think he's got a bird in there, you know, yeah. she was in Portland ish at the, the time. So of course you've got to put a bird on it. <laughs> it's really... And the binding choice of that green, just being this bright, colorful way to finish off the edges. I, yeah. I think it's delightful. It's a fun quilt. Okay. I think I, we need to pick up the pace because it's oh, one. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> telling us both. Um, so this is a clot. I believe it's a French word, so eclat. Uh, 35 by 50, Sophie Zog made this and entered it in 2019 at one first place in piecing. Mm -hmm. um, this, is a, this is a fabulous quilt. Again, like the mix of the prints with the solids, I think is done so, so well, just that one print with a few solids. And yeah. I love the the quilting, the way that this is quilted to make your eye look at certain sections of the quilt. Mm -hmm. That where it looks like it jogs over at the bottom and it is so perfect that it could have been one giant piece that she cut off, but then you look at the piecing closer and you realize where the prints are lining up that it wasn't, yeah. that it was kind of planned that way. And again, this is planned improv where you have this idea she was inspired I think by a street mural mm -hmm. um, and just looking at how knowing that you think your view changes based on what's in front of it or you know that could be a fence cutting off this mural it, it just takes my mind so many different places and that's due to the amazing quilting on this as well yeah and then you've got the little pops of pink in the binding mm-hmm and I think this is another good example of improv doesn't have to be free form. Right. Like, it's very controlled. Very controlled. But I very much doubt she drew this out before she made it either. Right. I don't know that for a fact, but that would be good. <laughs> um, next, we have Separated by Valerie Luberecki. This was in our piecing category at QuiltCon 2018, and it won People's Choice. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, you know, before we even talk about the artist statement, this is just a beautiful quilt with the piecing and the different shades of yellow, the scale. I feel like there's so much to look at, even though it's just yellow squares. Right. And the just varying the sizes of those and piecing them improvisationally, like little bits at a time, whatever you're feeling, and then working those blocks together. Yeah. The, where it shifts from large to small, it's not like this regular rhythm and it's not, it doesn't feel planned. It just feels very organic, even though it's all straight lines, it still feels organic to me. And it's very balanced, despite the fact mm -hmm. that so much different size and scale going on. Um, right. Yeah, Valerie made this quilt um, to every, there's 2,342 yellow squares here. And so it represents children who were separated from their families in 2019 at the U.S. border. Right. In just three, three months, four months, April yeah. to June. Right. Um, that's how many children of migrants and people seeking asylum were separated from their parents. Yeah. And so I feel like 
when you add that in, it's an even more powerful quilt. Right. And then we think about some, some squares are small and some squares are bigger. I know. It, I was just going to say the same thing, you know, there are these teenagers and then there are also these babies because yeah. it was all children. Yeah. The other, the other thing here is I think the binding choice was really important mm -hmm. to just let, like, to let it fade away and not take a, you know, not compete with anything in the, right, of the quilt. It's not framed. No. And that also, to me, goes back to the artist statement where it hasn't stopped. So you could just keep yeah. going with this. Okay. This is Rhythm and Blues 2013, third place in our use of negative space category, and it's by Ann Deister. Um, mm -hmm. This to me just screams modern. I mean, it's not a block-based composition at all. It's, there's so no. much to that. It, it plays with value and scale and, you know, it reminds me of like city buildings, but that's not what it is to the artist, you know? So this is one that's so open to interpretation of how you view it. Yeah. One thing I was thinking about while looking at this quilt is what if the negative space wasn't white? What if it was a different color, like, like orange or yellow? It would be completely different, but it would still be negative space. Right. Yeah, I feel like also just this, the use of these solids, it's a really bold color palette. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. The, will... There's so much movement, even though it is just solids, you know, like it still feels very textural. Yes. That... And you don't necessarily need the texture in the fabric to do that. Right, totally. So. Um, this is Mustard Stain by Paige Alexander. Um, 33 by 34 inches. We had a nine patch challenge at the 2017 Quilt Con and this one third place mm -hmm. in that challenge. Um, the more you look, the more nine patches you see. <laughs> right. I, I only saw one. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of nine patches here, whether it's in the like wax resist printing that she did, yep. um, dyeing these fabrics with that technique in a nine patch, very organic this um, nine patch design the overall is a nine patch the whole right? thing is a nine patch but then it's set it with two borders you know and, and a lot of people say well modern quilters don't use borders well sometimes they do just in different ways or sometimes on all sides or sometimes you know yeah whatever um, works for the composition the quilting here it it's a nine patch and it echoes out mm -hmm. which i didn't notice until just now so I was like, I didn't see that either. <laughs> I know it's all very, there's a lot of clever little pieces here. Um, it's such a bold color palette that is also very modern to me. And I feel like mm -hmm. I can see that some of these, like this lower right block has some sort of courthouse steps base, but then because of the way she's pieced it, you don't see that. You just right. see like blue you. Right. And I like how she offset it. It just feels like it's uplifting. It's lifting up. And then that piece binding on the right-hand side mm -hmm. where it matches at the bottom of that blue square and then it extends farther. It, it just feels like you could grab that and pull this up even farther off of the yellow background. And I love that. Yeah. Okay, this is um, Reflection by Nancy Purvis. 37 by 47 inches, one first place in use of negative space at 2016. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the negative space is the star here, I really feel like. It is. Um, aside from the precision piecing, those tiny little strips again, because this is not a large quilt and she has those tiny little bits. Right. But they're most effective with how they break up the background and not just on their own. Uh, and, and you look the strips in the foreground and how they're different than the strips in the background. It's very asymmetrical. Well, the quilt as a whole is very symmetrical, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I also think that this is another important binding choice to frame this one um, because it really feels anchored that way. Mm -hmm. It would be a different quilt with white binding. You know, the binding makes a huge difference. It does. It really can. Okay. I'm not trying to give anyone short shrift, but I am trying to. I know. We, we can ramble about quilts forever. I so. know. <laughs> um, we'll answer questions. Yeah, we have 
four more. So this is Read Between the Lines by Stephanie Rule, um, 2015, this one third place in the use of negative space category. This quote makes my eye like really like excited but confused. I have no idea how she actually constructed this. Right, with the piecing of those tiny little strips going through the background, but also lining up with that focal point in this off center. I was gonna say center, but it's off center, you know, and that adds more interest because it, it would feel very different if that block was right in the middle, that grouping of improv pieces. And, and this is again, something that's improv, but then controlled, so it- It's controlled, but I feel like this is a little more free form. This is more like, right. people would be like, oh yeah, that's improv. I feel like she took that improv that could have gone in so many different ways and, and then contained it mm -hmm. and said it's, you know. Yeah. And the, yeah, those skinny, skinny pieces. Mm -hmm. Is there hand quilting on this quilt or am I just seeing weird things on the picture? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's not in the artist statement, so I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, the way that it's got the negative space, but then it's interrupted with those skinny pieces is, I just think, mm -hmm. really interesting. Very well done. And this is The Other Side by Carson Converse. This was in 2016, Minimalist Design, and it um, won the Excellence Award for Quilting. Mm-hmm. My eye just goes like immediately goes to this point where the three colors meet the gray, the yellow, and then the stripes. Mm -hmm. Right. And those stripes are pieced in with like she hand painted that gray and cream fabric and then pieced it with that solid yellow. Uh, it's really technically very skilled, but also very interesting to look at because the texture of the quilting on the left hand side doesn't match the texture on the right hand side. You can see see the difference and mm -hmm. right the contrast it's, makes it interesting a lot skinnier on the left you're right mm -hmm. yeah and then again she's done a pieced binding to okay. have the flow extend around the shape <clears throat> i think the 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 marbled hand-painted fabric really softens the overall piece you know it, it would be very I mean, it is a very linear and sharp dynamic thing to look at, but having that modeled look really kind of gives it a little something. It does. It reminds me of steps. I could walk up there, but trying to get up that yellow side would be an entirely different <laughs> experience altogether. Yeah. Other side. Um, this is the Peach Quilt um, by Kamala Morali. This was won first place in 2020 Minimalist Design. Mm -hmm. I mean, the um, hot wear is just everything. It is. <laughs> and this is, you know, very much framed with these linear pieces in this background with big, thick borders, which a lot of modern quilts don't have, you know. A, a lot of modern quilts fill the entire frame where this is very precisely pieced into this border, but it looks like it's just floating there, you know. It, yeah. The difference in textiles here, because there's wovens and there are, I think, some silks in here. Um, yeah, there's definitely fabrics with a sheen, like cross weaves or, or silks, mm -hmm. or because it, it, you can even tell from the photograph, it's kind of bouncing light. Right. It, this quilt just glows in person. It, it does. Yeah, it's a great example of minimalism. And I think you're right, like so often I think, oh, a border is a very traditional quilt element, but not always, like. No. <laughs> not here. Right. Uh, and for a minimalist quilt, a lot of people think minimalism is, you know, again, goes back to that two colors, like one, two, and that's it. Two solid colors and that's minimalist. But this, even though there's a lot of different texture and textiles and shades of that same color, it's still very minimal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Final, final quilt. It's a good one. It is. <laughs> it's squircles for the love of squircles. Um, there is so much to say about this quilt. <laughs> this quilt was in our handwork category this year at QuiltCon. 
it won our excellence award. It's by Marla Varner. Um, Marla, if you're, I think you said you were going to watch, we love your quilt. Um, so this hung at the front of the show next to best in show. And I just, there's just so much to look at. I, I'm it has that pop art feel, you know, again, talking about art styles, it's very bold and vibrant. And again, like yeah. Tara's double wedding ring, the colors that are paired next to each other here are combinations you don't think should work, but they do. And they're beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily come up with that. And I love when I try to look past the squircles and I look at the background, how it's irregularly pieced, but then I, there's some like splotches that go together, like that light pink splotch in the left middle. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, there's two, and I, you know, those may have been done improv because you've got little strips here and there. And those very straight lines where they're hard corners meeting and then the difference of the squircles that are appliqued on top and then hand quilted. And there's a running line of hand quilting that goes, you could, if you spent the time, you could trace this across the entire, I think we tried to trace that. When we yeah, it's, looked at so it. the fact that this, you've got improv, you've got applique, you have hand quilting, um, you've got this great use of solid color. The, mm -hmm. every squircle has, a, like a quilted line just in the interior and then I and then Colleen's mentioning there's this like one continuous line of quilting that goes throughout the whole quilt and Marla's changed quilting thread color as she goes and it's just like it's really magical um I wish we had more like detailed shots of it to show so yeah, it's good. It's so these good. are all on the website and you can go look there and zoom in you can see some of these detailed shots Yes. If you yeah, that's, check them out on the website. Yes, if you uh, I know that some people have asked to zoom in. <laughs> I know. Um, I I can't zoom in on on this, but um, or not to anything that would be satisfying. That's for sure. But yeah, if you go to quiltcon.com and you click on winners, you'll be able to see all the winners from all the categories from the past quilt cons, um, and that is where we went to pick out the ones we wanted to talk about today. So um, that's. That's us, right? That's us chattering. That, that's us. Let's see if there's questions in the few minutes we left. <laughs> there are many questions. So um, I'm going to go in. with like two minutes now. For <laughs> that, that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, so I've kind of structured, I'm combining it, grouping the questions. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what you guys think define, I, we talked about the definitions of modern quilt quilts in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a lot of questions about um, you know, how do you see the difference between an art quilt and a modern quilt? And in addition to that, you know, how would you describe the differences between a traditional quilt and a modern quilt? Because there's a lot of interplay between the different types of quilts. So can you all expand upon there that? There are, and I think it's a blurred line, um, you know, where art quilts tend to hang on the wall because of all of the intricate work that's involved in them. You could never use this. Most of these quilts while they may not get used on a bed, they could be used on a bed. They are functional, they're gonna hold up, they're made to be used and loved, except they're so beautiful, they're probably hanging on a wall. Um, whereas you could use them. And as far as the difference between traditional and modern, I think that is a line that's blurred as well, where there are elements of traditional quilts and modern quilting, and they are never going to be forms unto themselves that you could separate with a with a firm line yeah my my best answer is so unsatisfying which is just that i know it when i look at it what i think it is and i feel like there are quilts that that are both like i feel like i've made mm -hmm. quilts that are traditional but i also call them modern in some ways um you know i think i think for me um Tara's double wedding ring is a really strong example of that. Like this, yes, this is a traditional quilt. It is a traditional block. It is traditionally made, like such an homage to traditional technique. But the way she's chosen color and the way that they don't all match up, the colors themselves, that is very modern. Um, 
And it's, you know, and uh, you can also link this up with Amish quilt, you know, references. Like, so, right. you know, it's like, so that question comes up a lot of what are the differences? And I, I feel like a lot of it is just upon, in the eye of the beholder. And it's subjective. Like, you're not wrong. It is. And just like in the art world, things can fit into multiple categories. Absolutely. And that's okay. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So you touched on, um, in your definition or in your um, expansion, Colleen, you touched on the idea of functionality. Um, we had a few right. questions about the functionality of quilt. Um, one, what do you mean by it being functional? This is the first question, and then I'll ask a follow-up question. Right. You could use it. You could put it on your bed. You can throw it in your washing machine and dryer and then snuggle up on the couch with it again. You know, um, there's like an art quilting where you may use materials that don't hold up to that um, to get those like effects that you want. You know, when you are making a realistic dog look with certain fibers in there and fibers on top of the quilts, those aren't traditionally used in modern quilts. Could I say traditional and modern in the same sentence there? I don't know. Modern, <laughs> traditional, in traditional modern quilting. <laughs> That's really confusing. Um, Right. It, it just means that you could put it on your bed and use it and wash it and dry it. Right. And, and I should note that um, that does not mean that like mini quilts are not a thing within the modern context. I mean, a mini mm -hmm. quilt can also be used on your table, thrown in the wash, things like that. I have many, many quilts that have been used as teddy bear blankets. So, exactly. You know, and then we wash them and dry them still. <laughs> I used them. <laughs> pad for a while. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so then the, it still in the same vein as functionality, um, Mary Kate had noticed that a lot of the larger, that there's a lot of larger quilts at QuiltCon. Um, and so she asked if the usability of the quilt is an important feature of modern quilts or even an important feature to get into the QuiltCon show. I, that's a, that's a great question. So one actually category we didn't pull from is we have a small quilts category. Um, so any quilt that is under 36 inches per side um, goes in the small quilts category and they compete together. Any quilt larger than that competes in the other category to which it fits um, and is entered. So the size does not impede or uh, help a quilt be accepted into QuiltCon. You know, QuiltCon is definitely a show based mo most on design um, than anything else. And, but I, I do agree. I think we pulled a lot of big quilts to look at. Probably most of these quilts are, you know, 60 by 70 or larger. Um, I have a real problem of if you're going to make a quilt, you should make it giant. And that's why, you know, they all take forever to finish. But I do, a, I do approach it from like, why am I going to make a quilt if it's not going to cover my body? And that's just me. Like, I, mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of wall space and, you know, and my baby quilts are like 55 by 60. I like them big. So um, <laughs> you know, I think that may just be coincidental in some of the quilts we pulled. Um, and we do have an entire category of small quilts that is heavily entered. We usually have like 50 to 60 quilts in the I show. Small quilts are a great way to try out what you want to do on a larger quilt. And I think a lot of modern quilters use them that way. Yeah. Um, instead of taking a large quilt and scaling it down, they start with a small thing to see if it's possible. And then they make it what they want it to be from there. Right. It's more of a sketch before you dive into the masterpiece. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, in talking about quilts getting into QuiltCon, there were some questions about how the show is judged. Um, one person asked if the maker's name is involved at all in the judging and if the artist's statement plays any sort of role in the acceptance of a quilt to quilt con. Well, not necessarily. Um, they... well, not, in, not acceptance into quilt con. No. So we've got, if, if you want to read up on this, you know, with a glass of wine tonight, we do have our judging and jurying policies posted online. <laughs> So you're welcome to look there. Um, and I'll, I'll let Colleen tackle the rest since you're more in that. All right. So yes, our jury looks at 
the image of the quilt and, that, and nothing else. So what you're seeing here on the screen is what they see plus a detail shot. And they make their call based on, on that information. Um, they know the size of it. They have no identifying features of the maker, no name, no, um, no location. They don't know where the person is located. Um, and then they, they narrow it down. They rate it one through five. They say, I definitely need this in. I don't need this in. And then things that are on the edge, they meet together and talk. And our jury is anonymous, as with most quilt shows um, that are jury. The jury is anonymous. And then our judges go over each quilt together and look at all of them one by one. And they examine it. And in the judging room, again, they don't know who made it or where they're from. They don't know anything about that person. We make sure all identifying marks are covered. Um, painters tape at the ready in case we missed something, you know, like they talk about the quilt itself. They are instructed not to allow any messaging of the quilt to impact. In the judging room, they judge on the overall design and how well the quilt is made. So if there's a an especially poignant artist statement, they can request to read an artist statement to try and understand what they're looking at. But then they're, and I've been in the judging room every year but one at, for all of the quilt cons. Um, but they, they really do put that aside. Um, we've heard repeatedly, I wish I could pick this to be first place because I love the message so much. But this quilt deserves to be first place based on the design and how it's made. So how it goes there. That, that is a great, um, that is a great response. Uh, thank you, Colleen. Um, so now I have some questions about individual quilts that we highlighted. Um, Deborah asks if we could talk more about the idea of basing a quilt on another artist's work. Um, it, it, and her example was the Lincoln quilt. I'll go to Lincoln. Yeah, I think, um, you know, this comes up a lot and uh, Kim did credit the artist that she was inspired by in her artist statement. And so for QuiltCon, that's certainly something that is on the entry form of was this inspired by another piece of art or, you know, is this from a pattern? And so there's plenty of space given to explain um, where the inspiration comes from if it's something like that. And I think it's something that you know, I've seen from time to time for sure. What about you, Colleen? Right. I think I just kind of put you on the spot there, but I know this is this is a really there's a, a topic that's open for a lot of interpretation yeah. on, you know, I think art has a rich history of making things that other people have made. I mean, if you see the number of people in an art gallery sketching the art that's there and then they go home and paint something that looks nearly identical um, and then they start twisting that and making it different and making it unique and making it your own you know like if we go back to waterfall um, if you were to look up the picture that it's based on and that you can definitely see the inspiration there and sometimes things are a more direct interpretation in a different medium, you know? So clearly the art of Lincoln was not a quilt. It's not making somebody else's quilt. It's taking it and interpreting it into a different medium. Mm -hmm. And just like so many things, it's a spectrum and you can fall in a myriad places along that spectrum. Yeah, and I would say that the, the more closely the quilt in this instance is inspired by another work of art, the more important it is that either permission is obtained if possible, um, or at the very least, you know, credit and notation given where possible in an artist statement mm -hmm. or, and such. So yeah, it's a good question. And there's definitely a lot there that is probably a whole nother webinar. It's a whole other webinar. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll, still talking about Lincoln, I'm not sure if you will have this information at the ready or not, but there were a lot of questions about how Lincoln was quilted. Um, if it was quilted with a single color, perhaps a monofilament, or if there was a lot of color change happening in the quilting. No, it's a single color. Um, it's you can kind just of really thin. If you look at the brown area here, that 
this is a this is lighter than the brown. So it's pro my guess is it would be some sort of very medium gray that she used. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's not a stark white, um, but you can definitely see it's the same color playing differently in different areas of the quilt based on what it's over. Right. So um, still, so moving on to the quilt ebb, um, another mm -hmm. qu question about quilting. Do we know if the quilt was quilted before or after the shapes were applique on? I mean, that's a great question. My knowledge of Carolyn is that the quilt was quilted after the applique. Mm -hmm. She is an applique first quilt after, um, from what I know. So the, the, so yes, all those starts and stops are actually starts <laughs> and stops. And the, yeah, the beauty in that is that it then allows the applique to really puff out beyond mm -hmm. the, the quilted space. Nice. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm looking to see if there's any other um, some other questions. Um, we ha we have a lot more questions about um, functionality, and um, you know I think it's also safe to say that function uh, functional could be hanging on a wall. That could be your quilt's function. Um, I think the the core of what we were talking about is that it's something that could be washed and dried a lot over the course mm -hmm. of its lifetime. Yeah. Um, it, I think that's a fair assessment. I think so. I think there's, you know, I have traditional quilts, you know, for, made by family members that um, have potentially been washed and dried, but, you know, all quilts can be functional that is true right. and i think that maybe with modern quilts there's a little bit less of the like preciousness element do you think that might be right of just like throw it in the washer and again I think so. a, show quilt, a show quilt and a <laughs> modern quilt on your couch are two different quilts so i think this there's a true that. like i don't know if carolyn's throwing ebb in the washing machine and dragging it <laughs> <laughs> right, and, that, and that, not. <laughs> that's a good thing to bring up is um, that sometimes when you do the washing and the drying, it, chains, it changes the drape of the quilt and how mm -hmm. that quilting may show up on the surface of the, of the quilt. Yeah, right, and I think we get a variety of that in QuiltCon as well, quilts that clearly are meant for show and to be impressive hanging up and being seen, um, but there are also quilts that were made for this purpose but have been washed because they wanted that texture mm -hmm. to show and be seen and you know we get that full spectrum yeah it's true all right um i we've having gone over um almost 15 minutes i think we should probably <laughs> cap our questions um at that but again, if people want to see the, the quilts that we have, you can visit quiltcon.com and look at the past winners. Um, and I, is there anything else you two would like to say on, on the topic of modern quilts? I mean, I think I need to go quilt right now that we're yeah, done. I think we talked an awful lot, so. <laughs> I think just like, thanks for coming and listening to us yammer on and look at these beautiful quilts and, um, and to I, our opinions. Again, these are just our opinions. Our opinions. <laughs> And I, I always like feel like there's room on the playground for everybody. And that's why we're here. And that's why I think these textile talks are so great. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, thank you everybody for joining us and be sure to check out next week's textile, textile talk as well. So thanks everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.